make our way through the gates. For the fire drill. It could easily have been a fire. And so let me just let me just suggest to you that it is absolutely crucial for instructions to be followed. When uh, there is a fire drill, you cannot stay close to the gates, rather close to the building. Um, let, me, let me further suggest to you that this, this um, alarm, this, it was not planned, it happened. And it could have easily been triggered by a fire. And if the building was on fire, the proximity of the gate where people stood would have put you in danger. And so it is important that when the alarm goes off, we make our way, all of us, make our way towards the cemetery. That is the point that we assembled. And it is only the fire marshals who remain behind to check that everything is going well. And so, please, if there is another drill, or indeed an episode, Please ensure, if you are not one of the fire marshals, you make sure that you make your way to, towards this, the entrance of the cemetery. And thank you for, for your cooperation and for the orderly way in which you exited the building. It is, it is commendable. Immediately after the divine service, uh, we will have a, a session of prayer and fasting. And so we will ask you, if you will, um, shortly thereafter, either you make your way um, to the hall, if you are not being a part of the, um, uh, the prayer and fasting session, we ask you if you will just be conscious and mindful that a prayer and fasting session will begin shortly after um, the divine service. Your cooperation is, is needed. Well, let me, um, let me say good, a very, very good afternoon to to everybody. Listen that I'm saying afternoon rather than morning. Sister Yvonne, um, your lunch will be delayed a little bit um, because it is afternoon already. Sister Florence, you, you were preaching my sermon by that story and I am so glad that you started it for me. We have come this far by faith. We have come this far by faith. And the Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. For we walk by faith and not by by sight. Um, that is a, that's a very telling Bible text, and I want us to explore one or two um, areas of this of this um, uh, this text. And so, let me just invite you to bow your heads with me, Father in heaven. Now is your time to manifest yourself in a real way in the proclamation of your word. 
And so, Lord, I pray that I will be minimized. And uh, the man, Christ Jesus, will be uplifted. Father, may we see him high and lifted up. Take control of my words, my thoughts. Lord, uh, I pray that you will uh, bless this congregation in Jesus' name. Amen. One of my all-time favorite gospel songs um, that I appreciate over, the, um, over, over the, the many years that I've been growing up and still appreciate is uh, the song that says, We have come this far by faith. We have come this far by faith. And if I was a singer, I would be singing it to you right now. But praise God, um, we all have different gifts. And I know that singing, perhaps, I'm saying perhaps, is not one of mine. And so I'm not going to sing it for you right now. We have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh, can't turn around now. We've come this far by faith. We have come this far by faith. And so on this very first Sabbath of 2024, what can I tell you? What can I tell you that will strengthen your hold on the Lord Jesus Christ? What can I tell you that you have not heard before. I submit to you that perhaps I cannot tell you anything that you have not heard before. But as I contemplate, as I contemplated uh, the sermon for today prayerfully, I was persuaded that I should present this message to you. For this particular song resonates with me as I contemplate where um, I am coming from and what I have accomplished and, uh, uh, and understood that all that I am and have is by and through the will and the power of the Almighty God. And I want you to know that all that you are and all that you have accomplished and all that you have amassed and everything about you is uh, of the Almighty God. Nothing, nothing that, that you have came by your own effort. It did not come to you because of your savviness. It did not come to you because of your intelligence. It did not come to you because of you, yourself, and in yourself. It came to you because of the Almighty God. You have come through 2023 not because of your will, but because of the will of the Almighty God. And here you are, here we are at the very start of 2024. And I submit to you today that you will get through the year not because of who you are, but because of who God is. As, as a youngster growing up, and make no mistake about it, I feel that I'm still a youngster. Never mind the, the whitish hair on my, my face, I feel still a young Sister Claudette. But as a youngster growing up, I, I was surrounded by people who understood what faith was all about. And what faith is all about. You know, in... 
over my life's journey, um, I have been associated with this church and another church in my youthful days. But as I got a little older and began to reflect on, um, on growing up and remembering the good old soldiers in the two churches that I have become um, acquainted and associated with, I want you to know that I have found uh, people surrounded me who have had difficult times and perhaps their, their journey had been so uncertain. I have heard... I have heard many said, I did not know how this would have turned out. But praise God, praise God, it turned out well. I have, it has only happened, not through me, but through the Almighty God. Many situations in your life and my life, we did not know if we would come through it. We did not know what was going to happen. But God worked it out for us. At these difficult times where food banks are prevalent, I want you to know, Christian friends, that there are times when perhaps you have not been able to supply food for, um, to feed yourself or your children. You have not had food in the cupboards. You looked in your purse or in your wallet and you could not find any money in there to buy some food. And yet still, you are still here. Yet still you are here. Yet still we are here. Why? Because God came through for you. You did not know how you're going to pay the bills. At this time when energy prices are so high, you do not know if you are able to, to meet all the demands. But I want you to know that God is on your side. And God will not abandon you. God will stand in your corner. God will make sure the bills are paid. He has done so in 2023. He will. He will. He will do it again in 2024. We have come this far by faith. We have come this far by faith. Nothing, nothing that you find yourself in, no difficulties, no challenging situation will overcome you if God is on your side. And if God is on your side, you will be victorious. No question about it, you will be victorious. God says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And I want you to know that he will carry you through. He will carry us through. That's the God we serve. We stand this, this afternoon. We stand this afternoon only because of the faith that the Lord has placed within us. I want to examine a few section of this song. We have come this far by faith. The, the two key words in this line are this far. This far. I know that faith is important. But think of what these two words say. They say this far, which represents the past and the present. This far denotes a, a, a measurement of time or achievement. And it only states that something has been accomplished but have not yet completed. This far indicates a, a beginning and a present state. We have journeyed from Egypt on our way to Canaan. We have reached this far. 
We have not yet attained the goal. We have come this far. The Lord has led us this far. And promises that he will take us all the way. And our God never, never fails. If he says, I will do it, he will do it. If he says, I will make a way, then he will make a way. And what you and I are asked to do is to take God at his word. We cannot expect to accomplish if we doubt God. If we say we believe, then our action must, must complement the fact that we believe. Otherwise, we are not going to make it. If I'm, if I'm standing where I am right now and wants to get to the back of the church, if I make three or four steps, I'll reach the column. Maybe not so far to the column. Ella Clarence might get to the column. I might be right here. Um, but guess what? I still have a little way to go to get to the back. I have reached this far. It says, it says, I have begun the journey. But by faith, by faith, I will get to the back. Because I don't know what the next moment holds for me. And neither do you. I want you to know that you are on a journey. You are on a journey to the heavenly Canaan. You are on a journey to the heavenly land. And we have reached this far. Now we know about the past. Because the past is history. We can speak about the past. The future, the future is unclear. We cannot see the future. We expect something to happen. But you know, we don't have to worry. Because the God who has taken us thus far, he has the future in his hands. And that is the God we, that is the God we serve. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. And if I walk, uh, walk by what I could see, <laughs> then the decisions I make would be based on my own understanding of what I was seeing. That is not walking by faith. That's not walking by faith. Walking in and by faith means that I am choosing to walk towards something that has yet to be seen. I am walking, I am choosing to walk to something, to, to get to a place where I cannot see. It has not been realized as yet. It is not available. I cannot see it being manifested yet. But I know it is coming. I know I will get there. I know that I will get there because God is carrying me. And if God carries you, you are sure to get to your destination. By faith, we have come this far. Come this far by faith. We shall continue by faith. By faith, we have surmounted the challenges and obstacles of 23. And by faith, we will conquer the challenges of 24. By faith in the power of the Almighty God, we will surmount the obstacles of this new year. You know, Christian friends, 
faith, <laughs> faith is not, faith is not seen. If you are seeing something, it has nothing to do with faith. Faith is, is, uh, um, is something or, uh, where, well, should I say, it embr you embrace something, an action, a project, or whatever it is, even though you cannot see the end result. You know, as a builder, I am, I'm always amazed. Um, a builder would pick up a drawing, a whole... Um, a whole lot of papers, and they would look at some scribbles on it, and they, they can visualize what this thing is going to look like. <laughs> and, and they can tell you what's going to happen and, because they can see it. They can see it. They know what is going to happen. I look at it, and I can see lines all over the place, um, somewhat messy, because you have lines going off here and there, but they can see it. Hey, listen, listen. Neither the builder nor anybody else can see what the future holds. It is only God who can read the papers and tell you what's going to happen. And so when we put our trust in God, we will most certainly make it. We need to lean, lean on the Lord. Lean on the Lord. But what does it mean to lean? What does it mean to lean? You know, friends, to lean on somebody, it's, it's incredible. To lean on someone means you are choosing to allow them to support you. Um, I, I noticed that as we left the building... Brother Essen was very privileged to have two beautiful ladies either side of him leading him. And uh, Brother Essen was quite comfortable walking between the two flowers. Leaning on someone, leaning on someone, mean allowing them to lead, to direct and to support you, to help you carry your load. <laughs> you are depending on this person to help you accomplish whatever it is that you are working on. It is plain to see that we came this far by faith, by leaning on the Lord. And Proverbs 3 and verse 5 says, And do not lean on your own understanding. We could not and did not lean on our own understanding, but the Lord's. The victories of 2023 did not happen by chance. It was through the strength of the Almighty God. And the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ um, that strengthens me. Faith does not have eyes, as I said before. And so, uh, to make it, we need to lean on God. Because God is our eyes. You know, um, I remember quoting this some in some sermon I, I presented some time ago, that in school uh, we learn basic mathematics. And Bradley knows all about maths. He's, he's studying some, some very difficult degree. Um, you know, but the basic mathematics says one plus one is two. One plus one is two. Although someone can tell you that they can show you that one plus one is not necessarily two. But basic mathematics and something that you can rely upon is one plus one gives you two. But when you lean on God, when you lean on God, 
one plus God equals enough. Are you hearing me? One plus God equals enough. Enough. Not two, but enough. You don't have to worry about leaning on anybody else because God doesn't need anybody else. He has it all. And so you plus God is enough. Enough to conquer the mountains of 2024. Enough. Enough to beat back the wolves. Enough. One plus God is enough. When we, when we add God to any of our equations, I want you to know that it changes the formation, the formulation, um, in such a way that our understanding cannot comprehend what the answer will be. We just can't imagine what the answer is going to be. Because God being so complex, God being so full, God being so all encapsulating, God being enough. When you and I lean on God, when you and I just bring God into the, you know, the equation, then I want you to know that the answers that come oftentimes confounds us. And I do not care what you are facing today. I want, you, I want to say to you, whatever you are facing, whatever the challenges are, whatever situation that you find yourself in, bring God into that equation. Bring God into that equation. Because whatever the challenges are, I want you to know that God will see you through those challenges. He will see you through those challenges. The songwriter says, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, I say leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, safe and secure, safe and, and secure. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. And friends, I, if you get nothing else from what I'm saying to you today, I want you to remember that you plus God is enough. Continue to lean on the everlasting arms. And you cannot fail, will not fail, every time you will mash down the devil. Because the devil is a loser, is a liar, is a thief, is a crook. Stand up with God. You will never, never, never go wrong. God will never fail you. He is always on your side and my side. The possibilities are enormous. Enormous. When we have God in the equation. There are multiple, multiple possibilities. And we are told in the song that we need to trust in his holy word. Trusting in his holy word. You and I are walking. We're walking down the street with a close friend. Who is supporting you. And you are leaning on their shoulders. They tell you everything 
is going to be okay. Well, is it? It is only God. It is only God who can assure you that everything is going to be okay. Only God. And so, friends, I want you to know that if we trust God, if we take him at his word, we will never, never fail. I want to, um, I want to suggest to you today, I want to suggest to you today that because there is no failure in God, when God is in your equation and my equation, we will always be a winner. We will always be a winner. And nobody likes losing. Nobody likes losing. You know, my, my wife as a primary school teacher, um, she might tell you that when... Uh, when the children goes out to take part in the, their sports day, the children are told, you don't worry about winning or losing. It is all about taking part. They are, they are told that. So, so don't worry. Just make sure you take part. Uh, well, you... Some of the children will, will tell you that they didn't quite accept that because when they come at the back, they're in tears because they know what it is to lose. Isn't that right? They know what it is to lose. And those who, those who win, you know, they are elated and they, they're doing the fist pump. And why? Because they get a certain feeling. Because they've won. Is that right? Am I, talk, am I talking truth? Of course. None of us like losing. Once upon a time, I used to play dominoes at the top, um, Elder Clarence. Once upon a time. I don't do it anymore. And we play for fun. And we had fun. But nobody having fun wants to lose. And if you've ever been downstairs and hear the men upstairs playing dominoes, we're having fun. But the noise that you hear coming from upstairs suggests that nobody wants to lose. And if you lose, you get six love. <laughs> you hear about it all night. And everybody else who weren't there will hear about it the following day. And the following week, you are reminded that you're coming back to the table. You remember what happened? Nobody wants to lose, but everybody wants to win. I want you to know today, friends, that with Jesus, you are a winner every day. Every single day. Every single day. And the challenge is... The challenges for 2024 are going to be great. They're going to be great. The Bible tells us quite clearly that all who will live godly will suffer persecution. So every day we wake up, we are expecting challenges. Every day. But guess what? Every day we wake up. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, we are a winner. And so whether you have food in your cupboard or not, whether you have a job or not, with God in the equation, you cannot go wrong. Stand firm with Jesus. Allow Jesus to take you over the threshold. Jesus has surmounted. He has scaled Mount Everest. You are able to scale Mount Everest with Jesus carrying you. He knows the route. He knows where the treacherous parts are. 
He knows. He knows when to breathe. He knows. He knows how to get you to the summit. He knows it. But if we try to fight him to get there on our own. Oh my goodness. We are not going to make it. God is able. God is able. And because God is able, you and I are able too. Not of ourselves, but because of Jesus Christ. So whatever 2024 throws at you, you can make it with Jesus. You will make it with Jesus. Stand firm. Remember, remember, remember the equation. You plus God is enough. May God bless you today.